Hi, I'm Claire Fallon. And I'm Emma Gray. We're the hosts of Here to Make Friends, a podcast for anyone who loves or loves to hate the Bachelor franchise. We're back in paradise, baby. Feels so good. Feels good to be in paradise right here in the studio. The sun beating down. Exactly. The palm trees. The lays. It's just, it's like the best place to fall in love. I'm feeling it already. Yeah. And you know what we also felt this week? Superlatives. We've, so many. <laughs> there was so much material. Four hours of paradise. Four we hours soldiered on. of exceptional moments. And we're excited to talk this through. So first, we have the most relatable glow up. Nicole. I've been definitely preparing for paradise. Gotta be prepared. There we go. I mean, who knows how many times I'm gonna cry. Just out here doing very minimal exercise, I I related to that. And you know what? She looks great, which which shows me that I don't have to do much exactly to get a to get a rockin' body. <laughs> uh, Nicole seems ready to shift her narrative from the girl who cried all the time to the girl who has re- an epic love story. Has an epic love story and a great body and is just super chill. I'm not here to like waste someone's time or have someone waste my time. Wow, goals. We'll see how that goes. Next we have most unrelatable favorite food. Hannah G, who, instead of selecting an actual food, selects an organized assortment of foods. A charcuterie board. Charcuterie board. Charcuterie board. Is the favorite food of a very specific type of person who spends a lot of time in specific sorts of places, like hotels or (laughs) upscale gastropubs or parties uh, with lots of champagne. (laughs) That's my favorite too. And you know who else spends a lot of time in those places and really loves charcuterie boards? Blake. Blake. Something for them to bond over. Wow. Us, wow. we're not feeling it. We're not really charcuterie board people. That's why we weren't invited to paradise. Exactly. The only reason. <laughs> Next, we have most brain poisoned by Tinder. Jane, who is basically a Tinder bio come to life. I like can't wait to just like eat tacos yeah. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because like that's my thing. She thinks ha- that liking tacos is an entire personality. <laughs> and I get it. If you swiped right enough times, you might feel the same way, but it's not, and it's not working for us. Imagine like tacos, hot sauce, and like my dream guy, like that's like all I need in life. Really not working. Next we have the most desperate getaway. Hi, hi. Holy (laughs) I gotta go. Oh, Blake. Oh, Blake. I've never seen a, a getaway like that on this entire show. You just, someone comes down the stairs and you just bolt. and say (laughs) over and over again. (laughs) Poor Blake uh, had a couple people arrive in paradise that he was not excited to see. And rather than hide that, he panicked. He he ran for the hills. And uh, it didn't work. It didn't, it didn't, it wasn't a great cover up. Any, mini, miny, mo, you. Can I talk to you? (laughs) Next, we have most likely to loudly announce steal anything, me, never, while sweating as he shoplifts a television. Also, Blake. Worst liar I've ever seen. Oh man, just not cut out for that life. No, uh, I was happy to see her. I was. I was happy to see her come down the stairs. Yeah, if you really think that you and Christina, for example, are on great terms and are amazing friends, you should be able to say that without looking so hunted. <laughs> um, Blake needs to work on his lying skills before he tries to pull another stunt like he did pre-Paradise Agreed. this season. And speaking of that dynamic, we have the most anticlimactic revenge plot. Christina. Christina came in sort of implying, hot, hot, I'm going to make Blake my bitch. Not again. Not again. Hail to the knock. She's really implying that she has some really diabolical plot to put him in his place. The plot was actually, I'm going to talk to him, and we're both going to be very ill-equipped to have the conversation. What happened with Kaylin? It's just like a slap in the face for me. Yeah, I was expecting something a little spicier out of that, uh, out of the date that she had planned for their confrontation. And instead, it was just a really emotional, painful conversation. Well, I was hoping this conversation would go better than this, but. <laughs> so this whole date would go better than this. So, you know, appreciate the attempt, but. And the spirit. And the spirit, but maybe a little better planning next time, Christina. Next, we have the biggest love bomber. Dylan. Oh, I mean, Dylan is sweet, but he 
came on a little strong a little quickly. He is just a, a grenade of emotions. Hannah, I'm so excited. Directed Rims. at Hannah G specifically. Directed at Hannah G. I just feel super lucky. Every time Hannah G is nearby, his head is nestled into her shoulder, his arm is around her. He's telling her how anxious it makes him to be away from her for even five minutes. You just met this girl, like, two days ago, buddy. Maybe chill out a little just bit. take it down one notch. Next, we have Best Sport. John Paul Jones, who gamely tries some tacos with a very intense hot sauce, courtesy of Jane, obviously. Who else? And uh, immediately starts vomiting. <coughs> <coughs> oh, my God. I've never been so impressed by someone's ability to simultaneously assure someone that they're fine and in fact they loved their tacos and they really appreciate it in between retching. <laughs> um, retching up everything in his stomach, it seemed like. I'm really sorry, Jade. Um, he didn't want her to feel bad that she literally made him ill. She literally poisoned him. It was very sweet of him. Jane, thank you so much. No, don't even thank me because I'm <laughs> so sad right now. But I think it was clear, despite his protestations, that he was not having a good night. No, not ideal. Next, we have biggest winner of week one. Obviously, this is Stagecoach. 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 It seemed initially like it might be Blake, but it turns out instead it is the place where Blake hooked up with everyone. Stagecoach Music Festival. They, I assume, tickets are just selling out for next year. It sounds like a really fun, laid back, sexy experience. And they got a lot of screen time uh, this Good episode, for a lot of plugs. Finally, most likely to get sent home next week. Gonna have to say Jane. I mean, even yeah. Demi called it out. Poor old Jane. I think she's going home. Jane hasn't really made a connection with anyone. She has made someone vomit. <laughs> and I don't think that's likely to work in her favor. Jane's never really meshed on the show during during this first week, and, and I doubt she's going to be one of the girls who's safe next week. And then our last Old Faithful, most likely to end up together in the end. Clay and Nicole? I guess? So far, I'm, I'm not feeling really strong about any of the couples. Um, They're all on a little bit of unsteady ground. It might just be too early to tell. We don't have a, a, a jump out Jade and Tanner yet. Um, but it's so early. We've seen yeah. much rougher situations turn around and lead Carly to and engagements. Evan. Exactly. And yeah. apparently, per Chris Harrison, there this are three. is the most successful Bachelor Bachelor in Paradise season yet. Most successful? So then are there more than three engagements? I guess we'll just have to wait I and see. I can't wait to find out. This feels like it could be the beginning of something special. <laughs> and that's it for superlatives for week one of Bachelor in Paradise. Join us again for more love and snark when we discuss next week's episodes two of Bachelor in Paradise. Until then, you can check out Here to Make Friends on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen.